Atlantis, our move, if you will, an ancient civilization, which, when it was destroyed, left behind a remnant, a surviving element of that race, which is a super race, more intelligent, smarter, more worthy than any other race on this earth, if you will, the master race. And if you understand the esoteric meaning of what you're hearing, you are hearing Nazi philosophy, National Socialism, Hitler's vision of world history. And when you find out who this person is and what he's doing now, it will all come together. We continue. Number one, do you think the Hyksos race was a race chosen by some greater intelligence to impart a superior ideology to the rest of the human race? Number two, not so much chose, but actually chose themselves. All genius is self-appointed. I would say these people were a remnant from a previous culture, and they had something they wanted to do, and they embodied their thinking and their work, and they influenced people by their works. Folks, that's the Luciferian philosophy. Continuing. They came into the land, and there were already humans in the Nile Valley. But they came into the land in an unobtrusive and dexterous maneuver so as not to alarm the existing culture. They came in without fighting. They took the worst land. They didn't try to impress their knowledge on the others. They just did things in a better way. Soon the people in that area were paying attention to them. Once they gained the attention of the people, it didn't take very long before they were running everything because they did everything with better methodology, which is the way life ought to be. You ought to show by example. Number one, what happened then? Number two, Fairly soon after arriving, they suggested to the people that as life was now so peaceful and harmonious, it would be a happy challenge to build a monument to the future, to the future of mankind. In my opinion, the Hyksos philosophy and the philosophy of many modern people is identical in that human beings can be perfect if they work toward that end and that is the heart and soul philosophy of Mystery Babylon, the mystery school, that man himself will become God. Wait until you find out who this is. Number one, what happened to the ancient tribe, the Hyksos? Number two, I think they are still in existence today and have not died out, but have gone underground many thousands of years ago. What we call masonry, Freemasonry is an offshoot of the group that started out. The Hyksos group became what the ultimate frontier calls the Brotherhoods. These are a group of people who have knowledge about what it really means to be human. And folks, that implies that the rest of us are not, and that also is in direct line and in direct concert with the philosophy of the mystery religion of Babylon. You see, to them, we are all cattle, animals. We have no intelligence. Continuing, these are a group of people who have knowledge about what it really means to be human, to be a human becoming, to grow toward human perfection. It's a philosophical thing. These people still exist. They still band together in groups here and there, and they show by doing. Again, their lifestyle shows that they really have a handle on what life is all about. They don't try to impress others with numbers or with what they know. They just live doing something they want to accomplish while they are here. We know in Egypt these people formed secret societies and that Pharaoh Akhenaten came up, quote, under the rose, unquote, out of one of these secret societies and took over the land of Egypt in a manner that forbids disclosure at a time in which the superficial popular theology left a want unsatisfied, which religion in a wider sense alone could supply. And there he has admitted that he knows, he knows the esoteric teachings of the mystery schools, their origin and their purpose. And if you've been listening from the beginning, now you know that this person is a priest of the mystery religion himself. Continuing, we know Alexander the Great wanted to get the knowledge of one of these ancient secret societies because he writes about it a great deal. 
Pythagoras considered to be circumcised in order to become one of the initiates of these secret societies, which are the Hyksos population carrying their knowledge of science and the universe and cosmology with them and keeping the truth secret so they wouldn't be persecuted and wiped out. You can imagine what society today would do to a group of people like this, were they to perform certain ancient rituals in public. Look what they did to Akhenaten. As soon as he was dead, they destroyed the city he built. Number one. That's right, they tried to. Number two, wipe out his name. Number one. Yes, because he taught there was only one God. Number two. The human tendency in the mass populace. Number one. When you use the term mass populace, are you referring to a group of people who have become undeveloped on account of a too pleasant or a too severe climate or even from physiological or psychological causes? Number two, the phrase mass populace was a term used by the ancient ones which usually refers to those in a populace, any populace, in any country who sit back waiting for some savior to raise them up out of their misery. Recognize the venom directed at Christianity, folks? Number one, then you are referring to people who are merely living a conditioned response to their environment. Number two, yes, the human tendency in the mass populace is to tear things down rather than to reach up to the excellent, which brings everything down to mediocrity. We're doing that in this country today with our so-called standards from the federal government. Everything's got to be brought down. This is just another social indication of this tendency in human beings to bring things down to a lower level so it's easier instead of striving for excellence. The Hyksos people went after pleasing results and worked hard in this manner. They strove for excellence and therefore they had to go underground to keep from being persecuted. In almost every case that we can trace, anyone that tried to bring the truth to man has been crucified or killed in some cruel or barbarous human ritual. And folks, for many years, that was exactly true. But this is not the true intent of these people. For if you also go back through history, you'll find that these are the people who have been behind every religious war, have been behind every revolution, have been behind and have literally are the heart and soul of socialism and communism. And everywhere they go, death follows. And it's stench. Number one. Do you know how the Great Pyramid was constructed? Number two, I leave that puzzle to the engineers, architects, and professors of physics who have researched and studied the building. No one at the present really knows. There are several suppositions, but since no one really knows, that mystery remains to be answered in the next 24 years. And since no one really knows, in my opinion, there's no such thing as an expert. Number one, in that case, how do you believe the Great Pyramid may have been constructed? Number two, my information from people who seem very knowledgeable says that they built in with water locks and floated the blocks into place. That's pretty hard to conceive of because they would have had to have been tremendous locks because the Great Pyramid is up on a plateau at least six miles from the banks of the Nile River. Water with a series of basins and pipes that match the corridor and the chamber system of the Great Pyramid's interior system embodies all the laws of hydraulic engineering. For example... The Great Pyramid's Grand Gallery is a perfect vacuum bottle. And this pumping system, which I explain in my book as I explore the research work of Edward J. Kunkel, author of the book, Pharaoh's Pump. Well, folks, it's time to take our break. Don't go away. We'll be right back and continue with this revelation after this very short pause. And we continue, folks. Number one, if this tribe of people, the Hyksos, caused the Great Pyramid to be constructed... Did they know their message wouldn't be understood for thousands of years, or did they think that humans would grasp its meaning a little bit before that? Number two, I think it's quite apparent that they knew it would be grasped in the 20th century. I think that they laid it out the core of their meaning would be picked up by those who really had the mathematical know-how. It wasn't until, until 1905 that we had the real understanding of gravitational astronomy, the astronomy involving the solar system and the movement of the Earth around the sun, down so fast that we had all the answers the builders of the Great Pyramid had. They knew as much or more about today's system of gravitational astronomy as we know. Number one, do you think this falls in line with a number of other theories that humans were at one time visited by supremely intelligent beings from other worlds? Number two, I don't accept that thesis. However, I believe that there is life probably on every little planetoid in the entire universe. 